What is the difference between an I-90 and an I-751? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. In today's video, we're talking, as we so often do, about lawful permanent resident status and specifically what the difference is between an I-90 application to replace a green card and an I-751 petition for removal of conditions. So, the 751 only applies to people who got a marriage-based green card, who received a conditional green card because the day they were granted lawful permanent resident status, their marriage was less than two years old. The I-90 form is for everybody else. The I-90 form is what you file if you've lost your green card, if USCIS made a mistake on your green card, if USCIS never delivered you your green card, if your green card has expired, if you've been in the United States for a long time and it's time to renew. That's the I-90. It's a relatively simple process. You're almost assuredly not going to have an interview on your I-90. It's just a matter of getting it on file and sending it to USCIS getting the receipt notice back. You might get fingerprinted, probably not. And then eventually you should just get your, your green card in the mail. Now, if you're filing an I-90 because your uh, green card has an error on it, that's a whole different issue. And that's a different approach on the I-90. So in those situations, you have to ask yourself this question, who made the mistake? Was it my mistake? Did I put my name wrong on the I-90 form or on the original 45 form? or was it USCIS's mistake? They make mistakes all the time. We've seen green cards with the wrong dates. We've seen green cards with the wrong name. We've seen green cards with the wrong category. And so if you're going to file for a replacement green card, the way that you do it is you pay the filing fee if it was your mistake. You don't pay the filing fee if it's their mistake. Now, sometimes you might have to file two or three times to get them to admit and understand that it was their mistake, but don't pay the fee if it wasn't your mistake. If it was their mistake, they should do it for free. And you don't send in your old green card with the application. What you do is you file it, you get the receipt notice, and then towards the end, they'll ask you for the old green card. And hopefully it's a pretty quick process where you can switch out the new one through the old one through Federal Express or whatever, through the mail. But you gotta be really careful with that green card and you gotta be really careful with that whole process. Now, this is all different. Those things I talked about with the I-90, those apply to anybody who's ever had lawful permanent resident status and hasn't yet gotten their citizenship. The I-751 is only for situations where you receive that conditional green card and you have now come to the two-year anniversary of your green card and you're in that 90-day window before your two years are up on your conditional resident status and you have to file the I-751. Now, this is very different than an I-90, so don't file the I-90 when you should file the I-751. I've had a couple of people on the show lately talking to me about how they filed the I-90 by mistake and that can really screw you up because it might it might blow your deadline for filing the I-751 on time. You might lose your filing fee, you most likely will. And so there's lots of reasons to make sure that you file the I-751 correctly and that that's the right form that you use. You don't use that I-90 unless you're trying to renew a different kind of a green card or replace one. So with the I-751, you have to submit updated marital evidence. You have to show them that you're still in a valid marriage, that you're still living together. You should by this point have a lot more marital evidence than you did at the I-130 stage. Now. Most likely, you won't have an interview on your I-751. Most likely, they'll approve it eventually before you get your citizenship or around the time you apply for citizenship, which is, of course, one year after that. Now, in the old days, the I-751s would get approved relatively quickly, three or four months, but now it's taking them over two years. So when you file for your I-751, you're going to get an extension letter. Currently, that extension letter is for four years, 48 months. So when you receive your 751 receipt notice you'll take that your expired green card and your passport if you need to travel around the united states so those are the two big differences between the 751 and the i-90 hope that all makes sense if you're looking for help placing your green card or getting usas to issue a proper green card or if the time has come for you to file an i-751 feel free to give us a call at 314-961-8200 we'd love to work with you you can also email us info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com if you're just looking for some free information, that's totally cool. We have several resources for you. One of those would be our Immigrant Home Facebook group. There's thousands and thousands of immigrants in there talking about the immigration process every day. That's one of the places where we post our Immigration Answer Show, which is another free resource that we have for you. That's where I talk for an hour to immigrants from around the world, answering their immigration 
related questions a couple times a week. And then of course, the YouTube channel itself, you should think about subscribing to it. And that way you'll get alerted whenever we make a new video or whenever we decide to go live in the channel, you'll get alerted right away. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.